Hi everyone, it's Lonnie. Welcome back to Abide in April. Our prompt for today is the word testimony or witness. Um, it's our last day of Abide in April. So I picked a few selections and I will admit I had trouble with one of them because it's been quoted so many times and it's this one here revelation 19 verse 10 and it's at the very end of verse 10 it says the testimony of jesus is the spirit of prophecy so i had to look up a few words because this phrase like i said it's been repeated so many times and doesn't really seem to matter which Bible you look it up in. This is one section I think a lot of people have problems with because the words are usually the same or they change it to where you don't even think it means what it says. So uh, the word testimony means evidence given, witness, a record, a report, I put the letter N beside these two words to remind me that um, it wouldn't be a verb. First and foremost, it's a noun because a testimony is a noun. And when you go into court, not so much nowadays, I think the definition has really slackened, but When it talks about giving testimony in the Bible, it's a very serious thing. I mean, by two or three witnesses, a thing was established. And so I think we make light of it these days. And it makes sense because it's part of what God wanted and seems like everything that God wanted is being tossed out in these end days. Um, so anyways, for myself, for this verse, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Prophecy in this case refers to um, detailing future events to the best of what I could figure. And so, this is not a translation. This is a sentence that came to me that doesn't necessarily explain this, but it helps me to understand a couple things. So, Jesus is the fulfillment and the essence of true prophecy. Because in the Old Testament, everything was supposed to point to Jesus. All the prophets, um, the law, Jesus came to fulfill the law, so therefore it had to speak of him. The, you know, the prophets, they prophesied about him, so he became the fulfillment of that prophecy. And that would explain why it was such a big deal about the false prophets because they would then not be speaking about Jesus. So I thought that was very interesting, and I didn't get this until I read that. So I don't know if that helps anybody, but that's what I got. And the other verse I liked was Hebrews 11 verse 5. By faith, Enoch was taken up so that he would not taste death, and he was not found, because God took him up. For he obtained the witness that before his being taken up, he was pleasing to God. So I'm just going to underline the word witness here. So it's a great verse, and I've read it several times. 
but yesterday when I was writing it out, what stood out to me was that he would not taste death. And the reason it was a big deal to me at the time when I read this yesterday is because I've heard prophecy teachers talk about um, Enoch being a picture of the church and the pre-tribulation rapture. But I never really quite understood why they, why they would say that. So then yesterday when I read it, it just jumped out at me so that he would not taste death. Well, even Jesus tasted death. But the only other people that won't or didn't, how to explain, the only other people that didn't taste death that I know of were Elijah, who was taken up in the whirlwind. And then there's the people that are going to be raptured. They'll be changed. They won't die, though. So I got really excited yesterday when I read this verse. He was not found because God took him. And the time is soon approaching, quickly approaching, where there's going to be this whole other group of people that's going to go up and they won't find us because God will have taken us. And we can say as Enoch that before our, take, our being taken up, we are pleasing to God. Why? How can I say that? Because it's because we believe in Jesus. That's what makes us pleasing to God. And that's why he's taking us up, because we believe. Like I said, when I read that yesterday and it kind of jumped off the page at me, I got really excited. And before that, I had just been kind of, I don't know, I guess I was a little bit down yesterday and tired. And then when I saw that, I was like, oh, he took him and he's going to take us. We have a lot to look forward to. In one section there, Paul says that, uh, I think it's Paul, that men haven't conceived what the Lord, or we can't imagine what the Lord has prepared for those who love him. I may have just butchered that, but no. Yes, Enoch was taken up so that he would not taste death. God took him up. Enoch got the witness that before he was being taken up, he was pleasing to God because he believed. And that's how the church will be taken up because we believe in Jesus. So let that be an encouragement to you today as we wrap up. What a verse to end April with. I mean, wow. 
So I hope you enjoyed this month's worth of Bible journaling. We'll see what happens in May. Um, I just hope you all were blessed and uh, thanks for tuning in and thank you for encouraging me. Uh, it's been my hope and prayer that I would be an encouragement to you. So um, we'll just call that a big answer to prayer. And uh, yeah, so we'll see you next time. Bye for now.